Hello, I'm Gord Holder from Ottawa's Post Media Operation. I'm here with colleagues Tim Baines of Ottawa and Jerry Matajong of Edmonton, and we're going to talk about the Sunday East Final for the CFL playoffs. Red Blacks and Eskimos. First question I need to ask my colleague Jerry is, what's up with Mike Riley's shoulder? Yeah, well, I guess we're going to find out. Uh, he did get banged up in the East Semi last week, uh, ended up leaving the game, came back out, stood on the sidelines with it braced up. Uh, it didn't seem to affect him in practice at all, Gord. He uh, was still practicing with the first team, taking all the reps and everything like that, and he is listed to start this game. The big question is, now that now that Cleon Lang is part of this team, uh, I mean, they have a bit of a history going together. Uh, the last three starts Riley's made in games against Cleon Lang, he hasn't been able to finish after taking hits from the guy. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this one turns out. Excited to, to get the game started tomorrow. I mean, in the four years that I've been a starter, I've taken... You know, a lot of very similar hits to the ones that I've been injured by, but, you know, if it's just uh, unlucky, wrong place at the wrong time type of thing. I am not going to suggest that Ottawa would ever do anything illegal beyond the rules or that they would ever go after a quarterback, but I've got to tell you, if they get shots at Mike Riley, they're going to take them. Uh, if there's any way you can throw Riley off his game, maybe make him run the ball a little bit, maybe make him think about it, they're going to be, he's going to be taking some hits tomorrow. And, and here's the thing, who knows how beat up he is? I mean, this is Mike Riley, a guy voted last three years in a row by his peers as the toughest player in the CFL. So, uh, I mean, absolutely, you got to hit him, you got to keep hitting him, and hope he stays down, I guess. you got to be smart for sure, but I think the situation in the game dictates what you're going to do. Because, um, you know, you win and there is a tomorrow, you lose and there's not. So you do everything that you can to win the game, no matter what it takes. Yeah. I do think, however, that Ottawa was still hoping uh, with the signing of Thomas DeMarco that he would be starting the game. Yeah, wasn't that strange? We weren't sure exactly how that was all going to work out when they go into day one of practice. And all of a sudden, they bring, lo and behold, Thomas DeMarco back into the mix. I mean, he spent the preseason with them, ended up getting cut a couple weeks into the season, uh, just couldn't find a place for him to fit. Uh, all of a sudden, all the speculation online was just how hurt is Riley. Uh, it seemed to be just an insurance policy on the Eskimos' part. Let me ask you this. Have you seen Mike Riley raise his left arm over his head this week? <laughs> you know what? He did go out, and he was uh, he was lobbing the ball downfield 40 yards uh, after he warmed up. So uh, I, I don't know how much zip he had or, or how much uh, you know non-arm swing is involved. but And it is his, his non-arm he injured, by the way. But, uh, I, I mean... Once he's in the, the East Final, the adrenaline's pumping, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's shot up full of whatever medicine they need to give him. We'll, we'll see. The story with the Red Blacks, or one of the big stories with the Red Blacks, is the kicking game. Tim, tell us about that. Well, Chris Milo uh, was, has been banged up for about a month now. He heard it uh, just before the Winnipeg game, decided he couldn't go. So the Red Blacks are going to go with Ray Early as their kicker and punter, and Zach Medeiros will do the kickoffs. Um, Milo hasn't exactly been a model of consistency this year, a little over 80%, and uh, they've been, the organization has been pleased with early. Yeah, but that has to be a concern. Well, anytime you're talking uh, a possible, a potential game-winning field goal, uh, as teams tend to work out around here between these two teams, uh, so it, maybe that's what it comes down to, and maybe it's Ray Early that puts it through. The Eskimos were pretty solid in that department. I mean, uh, nobody has been more accurate than, than Sean White over the season. He was kicking uh, right around 94, 95% of his field goals. Hasn't missed inside of the 50-yard line all season. Uh, of course, he was overshadowed by Medlock, uh, kicking a record number of field goals all season. But, uh, hey, he made the most of his opportunity. So here's the question. Who's going to win? Uh, that's, you mean who's going to win in overtime? Because that's what, this guaranteed that's what this one's going to come down to. Just like it did in the season opener when it was the, uh, the replay of the Grey Cup final from last year. Uh, and then they played again, 26-23 uh, game, obviously won by Ottawa. Uh, coming down to field goal at the end, so I imagine it's going to be close. Out. I'm going to be, a, I'm going to go contrary, and I'm, I, I disagree strongly because unlike the game of football, which is a team game, this is all about me. I'm selfish. I want it. It's going to be 41-7 to for Ottawa. They're going to be leading by 30 points at halftime because I need to book my train ticket for Grey Cup. So they can't let it go into the fourth quarter. I won't have time to do it. Enjoy the game. This is Gord Holder for Post Media News.